And now, Mona Magic. You can just call him Edgar. Hello everyone, this is uh, Mona Magic, and I'd like to welcome you back. I've got uh, Bayou Tiger with me, and uh, he's going to be talking about ritual music and CD. He's got lots of information to show and to tell, and uh, you'll hear a lot of this music going on in the show. And I know that you may have uh, listened to the last interview that I did with him, but if you didn't, please do check it out on YouTube. And uh, here we are, we've got... Hey you, hello there you, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, and how are you? I'm doing just fabulous. Um, you know, you were in the show last time, and um, I, I thank you for that, and, and thank you for coming back. Um, I'd like to talk about your, uh, you, you know, your CD, but before I even do that, let's just talk about ritual music, because your CD is really about ritual music. It's it's really deep. Um, I listened to it, and uh, the, it, it's... It's almost to the point where is that it's a whole volume. Each you know each clip is is a whole volume. So I'd like you to really uh, give a whole mix as to you know what is your interpretation of how ritual music is used and how you use it. Sure, I will answer that for you. Ritual music is music that's used for a psychodrama. Um, meaning it's made to put you into the state of very, very effective ritual magic. Uh, there are many different forms of it. There is tribal drumming, there's, you know, Egyptian music that they used to use. There are several different kinds of music and there are several different instruments you can use. And it's there to give a certain sense of awareness that this is the spiritual moment going on. And that's what I primarily use this for. Um, I do like the, the Native American sun dance. It's very beautiful. And there's, and there's other dances that I like too. Um, I use it for the exact same purpose. Depending on the ritual music, depending on the ceremony, depending on hour, times, days, things like that, that's when I really utilize uh, certain musics. Um, music itself is a form of magic. Um, like I said earlier about message units, hypnosis, uh, music is a good form of hypnosis as well. If you go to a concert or if you put on a love song and you start to feel the, the tingling sensations in your arm, um, that, that's essentially you're being overloaded with message units and then you start singing the words and it just gets you in that loving kind of mood. Uh, hence why in the 70s, why they played romantic music right before the people made love, things like that. So there's many different kinds, you know. If, if you want to let out some anger, play some Metallica from the 1980s. All, really, all music is ritual music. And that, feel, that's how it is. Do you feel that it's a matter of vibration and um, uh, taking it from vibration? Or do you feel that it's more so... Um, um, uh, uh, of the words, uh, because many people have broken down music to vibration, to then, you know, down to numbers, and then down to, you know, um, various octaves here and there. I mean, do you get down to the scientific or, let's say, the esoteric uh, reinterpretation of music, or do you actually just um, let it throw, uh, flow through you and let it come out? I mean, how, how do you relate to uh, ritual music? Well, um, yes, I, you're correct. I don't think there's any wrong way to interpret music. Uh, I use the vibrations, and you're very right. The words are very, very powerful. And we have to remember that music comes through several things. What would uh, a lead rock singer be without his band? Absolutely nothing. You know, it seemed like a guy who's just up there screaming, you know, without, without the complimentary pieces. So it really... Um, I look at the whole nine yards. I've been playing guitar for several years off and on. So I have a deep respect for instrumental and vocals, and there is a certain vibration. I do believe in like um, the, the omega, the alpha wave in the brain, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it all boils down to vibrations at the end of the day. Uh, there is the, um, I, I think it's the, the Schumann's octave, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, or this human vibration, human vibration, something like that, 
so don't quote me on that, but it's the vibration the earth has. And you're going to find that there is actually sound therapy that uses waves in order to help heal certain depressions, things like that. So, yes, I do believe it all boils down to the vibrations, and sometimes the words accompany the vibrations. So, yes, that's how I see music um, and how it really works. I see. So you're you're actually you actually play. You you're, you're a musician, so you actually play an instrument, and you understand. What's to say? I wouldn't say, and I, I don't want to be rude to people. It's not to say that people don't understand music, but you understand music, per se. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, I can read notation. I didn't play anything in this CD though, um, because I have so much respect for er, for Edgar, because he did such a fantastic job um, in, in the past. Um, one of his favorite tracks that I ever seen him perform was Hem Hente. It's a beautiful, beautiful track. Uh, it has the tribal drumming in it. It has uh, parts of the Gregorian chant. And, it, and it's very upbeat in a very spiritual way. It's not like African drum beat upbeat, but it's um, more of a calming, kind of like a Godsmack voodoo sort of feel. But it, it, it's really good, though. Um, I'm glad that I picked him. Because I really want a life working with him, and I wouldn't have worked with any other musician because he understands what the spiritual music is like. Um, it's hard to find spiritual music for ceremonial magicians and occultists a lot of times, unless it's dark ambient. And, you know, you know, Wiccans and Pagans have their music, Christians have their music, and but when it comes to ceremonial based stuff or meditative based stuff, or a meditative ceremony, it's like, what am I going to play here? I'm sure you could play any music, but I wanted to work on a CD, especially with an artist who's experienced in it, that's designed for the occultist, that's designed for that market. So that way, the people who want to listen to that, they can, they, they can relate to a sense, because it's very hard to find ceremonial magic music. I see. So the ceremonial magic music that you have put out with Edgar, um, are you also too uh, both aligned within the same spiritual spiritual path? Um, I wouldn't say it's the same, but it's very similar. We respect each other's paths. Um, he follows the paths of the red gods, hmm. and you're going to have to ask him what that means. Hmm. Um, I follow, as I talked about beforehand, the triad. Um, Phoebus Apollo, the will, mm. uh, Aphrodite, love, and Pallas Athena, the wisdom. Mm. And but it's during this whole process that I think when there's mutual respect for spirituality involved, I think that anyone can work together. Uh, he, he really did a good job putting parts of the music from his red path in here, and it really shaped up the CD differently. Uh, into more of the feel that I never expected, actually. I was expecting something more vibrant, but I learned expectations are limited. Uh, I actually got a whole different view, something I really appreciated even more. Um, he added in that kind of empty feeling, uh, the, the zen feeling, and maybe just a little bit sinister feeling uh, of realism in there, too. And, and it's with the Ayin Sof, because so many times people forget that God, the universe, Mother Nature, whatever, she is just as violent as she is beneficial, you know? Of course. We, we could talk about the birds, the bees, the butterflies. Oh, look how pretty that tree is. But what about that hurricane that's knocking down the trees? What about the earthquake that, that, that is taking lives, you know? And, and we forget about the destructive forces a lot of times when we try to blow those off. So... I think it's interesting that that there, there's an empty, neutral feeling in it. You know, how you feel something, you feel numbing sensations, you feel the vibrations hit you, and it puts you in that kind of Taoist state of mind. That, um, you know, for example, um, good and bad are just uh, all, ba all based on perception, right. you know. So I, I think that the CD has, has a tone of really the Ayin so for or that 
uh, the, that spirit we all have in us that's interconnected to a sense. Well, with that given, because you mentioned something about, um, you know, uh, Metallica and, um, you know, there's many others out there that, you know, that, um, that have gotten a bad name. And there's many, a few of them that I've actually heard to date that um, are just new that I thought, well, it sounds good. And then, it, you know, it brings about a certain vibration that you that you could use at that particular time. Now, the music that you have for your actual ritual music, um, have you thought about going through all the areas of, of uh, let's say, intent during um, ceremony and ritual? Because you do have certain, because I've listened to the music, I've listened to what you've got, and I've listened to, you know, many other, uh, let's say, non-ceremonial music to every type of ritual music. Um, is it also to your intent to, to uh, let's just say, check all the boxes of the intent of that particular ceremony? Um, yes. Um, every track on the CD has an intent. Um, you know, it's kind of set up in a chronological order. Um, you're going to find the reading from the book uh, in the, here in the second track. Uh, which is called the Great Manifestation of the Triad. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, um, I believe that with everything that goes on, that reading is very, very powerful. And it's actually hypnotic, and, and, it, and, it, and it does invoke the spirit in there. Uh, the pre initiate like the very first track, is kind of like the initiation into it. And with that being said, I think it's very, very powerful because... It's like the doorway that's opening, and when you listen to the tones, um, you really have it. It brings in that mindset, like there's a mystery coming in, like there's um, different, like like a like like a void coming in, and it's emptying everything out so you can be filled up. So this is so the intent is the for an hour to bring you fully through the spiritual process, uh, whether you're going to use this for meditation or use it for ritual. I see. Okay. Well, that sounds very interesting because, honestly, um, that I, I feel that that's what lots of people need because many times they they go through the ritual, but then they, they lack the actual, um, let's just say, um, uh, um, uh, 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 flow, you know, that, that, that additional flow that they need to, to really mesmerize themselves into the actual ritual, to really get lost into the moment. Because um, I cannot see how they could take a, a grimoire and, and read someone else's copy, someone else's text, and then just think, okay, fine, let's let it happen. You know, just, I don't know. It, I listened to the music, and I just was really uh, lost into it, actually. I really thought that it was actually uh, uh, well put together. How long did it take um, the two of you to actually put it together? Because I know that you say that you play guitar. And exactly explain to me what does Edgar actually do? What is his part in the actual instrumental part of, of the whole um, uh, CD? Because, of course, there's, you know, there's some lyrics. There is, um, I, I heard some type of, uh, uh, some type of symptom synthesizing um, um, background of it, um, if you can go through the actual instruments and, and why the, those were chosen so we can understand uh, exactly, you know, um, where where you're taking everyone. Well, uh, there are several drums, there is a synthesizer in yeah. there, and there's also um, uh, vocals as well in Gregorian right. chant. Hmm. Um, so, so the synthesizer, it's, it's the part, uh, this is all my interpretation, um, you're going to have to ask Edgar about the rest of that, or I will, but um, <laughs> with that being said, the synthesizer, it adds more of a, of that feeling of getting lost, I believe, uh, and the same thing with, with the Gregorian chant. Um, and whether you're pagan, Christian, Muslim, I think the Gregorian chant is very fitting because um, if you ever have a chance to li go into a Catholic Mass and listen, listen to the Catholic prayers and listen to the whole Mass in Latin, it's so magical, um, at least in my interpretation of it. And so the, especially the Gregorian chant in there really helps out. Um, I contributed to the vocals in there, uh, especially on the second and third track, 
And working on the vocals on the third track was the ceremony. And we had to volume up a little, little bit more uh, because what we wanted out of that was we wanted it to be overbearing a little bit to the speakers just, just, just to show the power of the ceremony, just to put that energy out there. And, and that was the intent on that. It was to show the power of the CD. It was to show the power of the will. Um, but the reading, it, it, it was a little more subtle. Uh, it was there to, once again, as I said, to put the person in a mindset with the synthesizer. Then um, the, there's, there's a little bit of drums in there. And that's, that's to set the pace for the mind. That's to show that the feeling of the divine. And, and I believe that there is, especially in every magical work, an entity involved at some point. And uh, I believe that the entity, spirit, or energy involved in this CD is the universe itself in its, in its own way. And that's why it's so mesmerizing, you know. So um, what happened was, well, how it worked out, he's in Columbia, I'm in the United States. And what I did was I used my iPhone, I did the recording, and I just sent them off to him. Oh, really? And he, yeah. And he um, he put them together within I would say about a week or so, and boom, we have we had the CD ready to go. Oh wow! And yeah, it, he's very talented. He, we wrote all of that probably, and actually in four day, three or four days. So it was pumped out pretty fast. Uh, it even caught me off guard. I think it caught me and Ed, Edgar both off guard. But um, sometimes he, he's such a proficient musician with what he does and he gets caught in that mind state himself mm. that um, he does wonderful music and he is in a band called M.A.I. Yeah. as well. He was, yeah, uh, that's his kind of solo thing and um, it can be Googled anywhere else. He's beautiful. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, beautiful, be beautiful music. So I'm glad I had a, ch had a chance to work with him. He's a great friend. I see. So your book that you've got coming up, is that going to actually ignite a new CD, in fact? Because um, from what I'm gathering, um, there was a lot of energy that came from this CD. There was a lot of energy that is going to lead towards, you know, uh, definitely another CD. But is that actually going to be conjoined with the actual book that you have? And will Edgar actually partake or have some type of influence as to how that book actually ends up because it seems like it's actually synchronized together I believe so too I, I believe I found a great uh, artist and mus musical partner and a friend to work with here um, I have a feeling it's going to manifest that way I just haven't told him yet <laughs> he's going to find out now okay all right. but um, uh, you know, we we were actually talking about uh, another album. Uh, you know, different different gen genres at some point, and I think that everything is going to go uh, more fluently. And um, I I would actually like to work with him a little bit more, and I believe it's going to happen. So I'm not going to count my eggs before they hatch, but we're we're going to see how well this one does, and we're going to go on from there. Uh, and then we're going to see where we can make the improvements. Uh, we're both going to put, put our CD out there. And we think it's going to be very helpful to the magical community. So hopefully that turns out. Well, with, hopefully it turns out that way. I have a question for you because I, you know, I, 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 I stopped going to lots of um, occult uh, stores, you know, uh, for various reasons. But when I do try to go into them, you know, from here and there, um, you know, sometimes I go into some of the new age ones and um, I, I see that a whole list of, of CDs out there and then you just don't know what the hell to look at. I'm sorry, listen to. And uh, sometimes you say, okay, fine, let's listen to whatever they've got in the store. One of the things that they don't promote is how to use the CDs. Uh, one of the things they don't promote is um, why they got the CD on and what the, what the purpose is. Now, uh, coming from, you know, uh, knowing many artists myself and, and listening to your CD, I would know why to use your CD. But can you give any, uh, um, a, 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 
I don't know, some type of prequel or some, some help out there as to how to choose music and how you would actually use your CD because it's one thing to listen to, but uh, for instance, I'll give you a good example. You mentioned the 70s. When you want to get late, what do you do? You go buy something romantic and you just basically put the tunes on and then you get some mm -hmm. whatever wine or whatever the case may be and say a couple few, uh, you know, forget me not. Okay, but with this right here, you know, you've got your book, you've got your, you know, you, you, you've got um, you, you, the book that you've written, and um, you've got, you know, or whatever book anyone wants to read, um, but then you've got your CD, so how does that play into what people would actually do? What, wh at what point would they actually listen to the CD? When they're on the drive, you know, when they're driving, um, before they go to sleep? Or before they're meditating, or before <laughs> they say, "Okay, fine, I want this. I want this. You know, I, I want this. Uh, this person, this job, this whatever." Before ritual, when? Well, very good question. Uh, I would recommend for it, and everybody's a little different. And uh, being the way I am, I'm a little more liberal in magic. Um, uh, hell, you can listen to this CD while having sex if you want. But generally, <laughs> it's a uh, it's a CD that's uh, geared toward the spiritual. So I would say this is more during your downtime. And this CD goes hand in hand with the Concilium 18. Mm. And I would recommend actually, first of all, reading the book and listening to the music at the same time. Mm. And uh, I've, I've done that several times. You talk about mind-blowing wisdom. You talk about magic. It hits you all at one time. Uh, it, it gets you drowsy just within the first 20 minutes or so. Uh, but then once it's all over, um, you know, you can play the CD again. And by, by the time you listen to the CD twice, um, it, sometimes three times, you will, you'll, you'll be done with the book because it's a short book. But uh, it causes this, hip, I want to say this hypnotic state. And it's once you understand the book itself and the philosophy behind the book as we talked about uh... you'll see exactly what the cd is geared toward it's geared toward your will it's geared toward creating and manifesting it's geared towards your magical practices and especially i believe it's geared, geared toward the astrological year not really the sun-based year as we see it here in america around the world on the julian calendar you know, but I see it based on the astrological year. I see. Okay. So basically, it's a, let's say, hand, well, I wouldn't say handbook, but hand CD to um, um, your book, as well as uh, possibly any type of aid of whatever type of ritual, ceremonial ritual that someone would actually want to go through. Mm -hmm. um, and to possibly open up. Uh, certain avenues spiritually for them to actually receive, be receptive towards the, you know, just basically that, that interconnection that they actually need in order to reciprocate in between spirit to, to, to the mundane, I would say. Yes, and as I said before, it's all about conventional wisdom. Um, what I believe once people listen to that CD, uh, they'll become magically wiser as well. Uh, some people may not get anything out of it, but I hope they do, because there's so much energy in there, and especially um, uh, there, there's so much energy. If you're not ready for it, you know, you better meditate before actually listening to it, uh, because it, it'll, it'll really not knock you off your feet. I don't know how else to put it, but um, it, you're right, though. Yeah, I believe it's geared towards the spirituality, and it could be used during specified rituals and things like that, but yes, any ceremonial ritual, uh, possibly a Thelemite ritual. It would you say this would be the opening or the actual closing or, um, or possibly during because you're talking about opening up um, various uh, realms but then you know the communication of what you do spiritually so is is there a uh, a banishing aspect of this, and is there a um, let's just say a let's just say you know protection aspect of this that one should actually look forward to before they listen to certain um, 
uh, uh, clips that you and I don't know tracks I should say I, I, I should speak the I should speak the, the musicians lang lingo the, the tracks so um, is there a certain banishing a certain you know uh, protection aspect of this or would you say that okay fine someone can go through um, the various uh, tracks you know open open arms oh there is a natural closing to it all mm. so there's, there's really nothing to worry about um, especially in this, you don't have to do any banishings. It naturally happens as soon as the CD shuts off. I see. I see. Okay. Well, because I tell you that I, I really, when I listened to it, I, I actually, um, I was able, well, I, I'm able to shut it off anyway, but I, I felt that, that, um, that spiral that you could actually feel. You know, there's a. You could actually get lost into mm -hmm. a few of a, a few of the tracks, and I said, "Well, that's pretty good. Okay, let me shut it off right now while I actually write." Uh, so I, I, I could actually feel that, and I can see, or I could hear and feel um, the actual energy that that I could see that your friend Edgar, your partner Edgar, has actually been into it for a very long time as well, um, and. It, it, it for quite a few many years, as a matter of fact, because I can I can sense that. So um, that that's really great, and I, I really wish you you both you know um, many more CDs because I'm surprised if that that's the only one that you've done together because it sounded like you you both have been really friends for a long time because it seemed synchronized so well. Oh, we've been friends for a while, and. Um, I think we just have a spirituality that clicks together. Mm. Uh, once again, our, um, our, both of our bases, I believe, falls back on the Crowley, you know? So uh, that, that's where we generally um, have our meeting line, but the rest is whatever. We're, we're, we're different. Uh, but we have a mutual respect for each other's abilities, and that's where I think the, uh, the complementary aspect comes from. Um, and another thing that we have is is our personality towards each other. You know, we're we're just as curious about each other's spirituality as um, anyone else. You know, I, I there are times I, I still call him and I say, "Tell me about the red gods." <laughs> you know, and um, and then he'll say, "Hey, what's the Concilium 18 about?" You know, and he did this music. You know, just all, all off the fly. I mean, and he captured the spirit of, of my book perfectly. Um, I, I think he really knows spiritually what I'm about. Uh, I just don't think we dive into the semantics. It's just like there, we naturally click, mm -hmm. and uh, and it turned out so well. And I hope to do another one with him very soon. He, uh, so that should probably, hopefully, um, don't don't put. All, everything into it. it happened by the end of 2013, roughly. Yes. Well, I so can we're going to talk can... about everything, see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Well, what's next for both of you besides it? I mean, have you decided to or even thought about doing something on your own solo? Well, I'm going to be honest. Um, although I am a, although I can do my own musicianship, I do it more for a hobby. And, um, I think I think I do okay, but honestly, when it comes to spiritual music, I would rather do it with Edgar, mm. because he's always been a great inspiration. Um, I knew him way before we even started this CD. Um, it was kind of funny. We were we were both kind kind of fans of each other, uh, right beforehand. You know, um, he was a fan of my writing and my blogs, and I was a fan uh, of his music and. And it was weird. Uh, I'm like, you're Edgar Kerbal. He goes, you're the Value Tiger. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so we were talking about the CD. Uh, we both ha had it in mind about, about making a CD a few months prior before its actual release. Um, I, w I wasn't just in a mind to get that done because I was going through a phase of my life. But after I got out of that phase... Um, I think it was a little bit after the death of my uncle that I thought, wow, it's time to work on this and it's time to uh, get that CD out there, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, my uncle's death made me realize that in the end, well, you know, well, you never know when you're going to go. I mean, hell, I, I could have a stroke for right now as far as I know. So a part of the will sometimes is get achieving your dreams, doing what you want to do. That just seems to be a, a very strong part of the will. Mm, so 
Um, there's a lot of energy behind this CD. Uh, my uncle's my, my uncle has been a great influence on me too. So, um, uh, at least in my mind, this goes to him as well. Excellent, excellent. Well, on that note, I'd just like to thank you for uh, being on the show. And um, by the way, I have enjoyed the actual CD because uh, all the all the uh, the actual tracks have just been, you know, fabulous. You know, I've listened to them, and um, I thought to myself, is there a bad one? No, there wasn't a bad one. So I encourage everyone to, you know, really, really listen to it and, and pick it up. What is the best way for people to actually um, purchase the actual uh, tracks and, and, and the CD that you've got? What is the best uh, you can actually purchase this on Amazon. Um, as you will see in the link description, you can just type in Arise, Magic Without Tears. And that's the best way to find it. Excellent, excellent. And of course, um, you've got so many other things going on. Um, do you have plans for uh, something else, you know, even even larger? Or are you just going to keep on with the momentum that you've got at the moment, which is pretty strong, by the way? I'm working on it, and hopefully that momentum keeps going. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm actually working on um, two books right now. I'm working on my actual grimoire, as I mentioned in the last one, Libra Magica, Imperium Volantis. And then I'm also working on a fictional book as well um, that, that has just been inspired. So I'm getting all my characters and my foundations laid out right now. Um, it's going to be a novel. It's going to have real magical information on it. Uh, I already have the map all set up and everything. It's going to be a very unique experience. I'm going to write this next book uh, completely based around you know the different cults and the different philosophies you see today. For example, um, I like the satanic philosophy. I'm not a satanist, but I like the satanic philosophy. You know, with uh, you know achieving what you want and having no regrets about it. You know. If, for example, if, if you know you're right and you don't feel guilty, then there's not a problem, you know? It's just how other people interpret it and how so, so society sees it. Um, there was that, actually, one time I was in a library and I saw the Satanic Bible in, in the psychology section. Really? So that was interesting, yes. I did, I uh, I've seen it twice be... in two libraries. Really? In the, psych in the psychology section? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Is that where it's, is that the proper place? Um, I believe it is. Um, mm -hmm. If you go through it during that time period, yeah. Um, he yeah. goes into more politically correct I see. Right. Uh, terminology with it. You know, he calls rituals psychodramas, mm. um, and and he kind of deprograms you away from a lot of the brainwashing we go through when we're growing sure. up with religions and things like that. Sure, sure. So I'm not a huge fan of LaVey, but I think that that book uh, is part, may not even be up to par to a modern psychological book, but um, I know plenty of Satanists that are psychologists as well. So I, as I said uh, in my fictional book, I don't have a title for it yet, it's going to have different sects just like that, you know? Um, so it's going to, I'm going to have the new agey kind of set, uh, sect in here and I'm also going to have so many other things in there. So it's, it's going to be awesome. Well, good luck on your book. It sounds like it's going to be really fabulous and something that's actually going to be one of those huge novels that, that uh, you know, definitely will go past, you know, 200 pages because, you know, you're covering a lot of uh, coverage when it comes down to uh, history and uh, really, um, you know, just, just you know, everyone's, everyone's pastime that they enjoy looking back to. But um, that's all for now. But I'd like to thank you for, you know, everything that you have contributed and uh, the the great book um, that you've written and the wonderful music uh, that both you and Edgar have done. And I wish you all the best because I do see that you're going to be doing something by the end of the year, but I see something before then um, because it seemed like a, such a great piece between the two of you. And uh, who knows, maybe even we'll have a scene that goes to uh, your actual fiction book that comes out. Because um, if you can get oh, that going. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. So, uh, um... Take care, and um, until we meet next time, um, everyone stay empowered. You too.